morning. It is good to be with you in worship this morning, whether you are joining us here in person or online. We've got a lot of stuff going on this morning. It's going to be a wonderful time of worship. Uh, thanks to those who are helping with worship this morning. On organ is Nancy Slezak. She's doing a lot this morning as well. Uh, our technical director this morning is Kyle Neville. Our liturgist today is Lauren McElhaney. Our acolyte today is Anna Earhart. And we have special music by our Youth Handbell Choir today, which is very exciting. <laughs> and there's some grown-ups helping too. Uh, they've been practicing hard for the entire month of July, and they are excited to perform for you today. Our chancel flowers this morning were given with love by Debbie and Mark Markew. Mike Markew, that's tricky. In memory of their fathers, Charles Dewar and Merce Markew. Thank you, Debbie. This morning, we will also be sharing in the Lord's Supper. If you are here in person and you didn't grab elements, they're available at all the entrances. Or, of course, if you brought your own, that's great. For those of you who are joining virtually, whatever you have is fine, and God will bless it. And you're invited to stay after worship today for fellowship hour. Um, David bought all the food, so please come and eat it so we don't have to take it home. This week, our Compassion Camp VBS continues. We had 14 kids here last week, and half of them hadn't been here before, so that was fun. Um, and so if you have any kids, neighbors, uh, grandchildren who are kindergarten through sixth grade, feel free to bring them by on Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. Next Sunday, uh, we do not have someone signed up to host Fellowship Hour unless someone signed up this morning. So if you want snacks... Uh, check it out. Check out the sign-up sheet on the deacon's table. Uh, Community Dinners is also looking for produce for a salad in September. If your garden is overproducing and you have cucumbers, zucchini, bell peppers, cherry tomatoes, broccoli, or yellow squash, they would love to take some off your hands. You can contact Judy Birch, and she would be glad to talk to you about that. And also mark your calendars now for Worship Without Walls. It is on August 27th, the last Sunday of the month. We will be not here, so if you come here, no one's going to be here. We will be at Alameda Park in the Masonic Shelter right next to the Purple Park. Uh, and this is a joint service with our other Presbyterian uh, friends and neighbors in Butler. We will have worship together, and then we're having a picnic. Hamburgers and hot dogs will be provided. You're invited to bring a side dish or a dessert to share, and it'll be a wonderful time of worship and fellowship. Are there any other announcements that need to be lifted up this morning? Hearing none, then let us prepare our hearts to worship God.
Please rise in body or spirit and let us join together in our responsive call to worship. Rejoice, for Jesus is in our midst. Jesus feeds us and fills us with hope. Be glad, for Jesus has enough for all. Jesus frees us from the pursuit of that which does not satisfy. Sing for joy, for Jesus takes what little we have and multiplies it. We come to worship the one who nourishes our soul. Let us join together in our unison opening prayer. We praise you, O God, for the meaning you give to our lives in Jesus. He is your deep and everlasting love for the world, and we rejoice in his promise to sustain us with his life. We praise you for filling our emptiness with his goodness, and thank you for your gift to us of the true bread from heaven, Jesus Christ, our living Lord, in whose name we pray, amen. clearly calls us to share what we have, yet all too often we keep our hearts, hands, and wallets, and minds firmly closed. So let us now take a moment to reflect on our, our unwillingness to share by joining together in our unison prayer of confession. Let us pray. Generous God, your mercy knows no end. Forgive us, we pray, for the times when our own wants have overpowered the needs of others. Forgive us for complaining about problems instead of creating solutions, and for allowing fear and greed to speak louder than your call to love. Help us transcend self-centeredness and give abundantly as you give to us. Hear this prayer, O oh God, and hear us as we lift our silent confessions before you now.
Hear our prayers, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, through the power of the Holy Spirit, God is able to accomplish abundantly more than we could ever ask or imagine. Even when our fists are closed, the good news remains. God loves us, and in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. now take a moment to share the peace of Christ with one another. Those of you in person, feel free to turn around and wave, and the peace of Christ be with you at home as well. fun amount of time together <clears throat> without everybody here. This is where I did not want to be. But I wanted you to know a couple of things about this morning. Thank you to the, be okay Kyle? <laughs> We're okay. We're, anyway, I can talk loud. <clears throat> Just a couple of things about this this morning. We've had all kinds of vacations and things like that that kept us apart and kept us together. And that's summer, and I know that's family and that's kids. Been there, done that. For right now, however, there are a couple of things you need to know about what we're going to do. First of all, we're going to count. If you've ever heard handbells, maybe you have seen some of the adults going, Well, you're going to hear it this morning, and this is a part of the training. Hear the counting to stay together. We say measures, and we say beats in the measure. We're also finding that it's really hard to turn pages. Really hard. And when you have gloves on, would you all hand, put your hands up? When you've got, okay, down. When you've got gloves on, it's really hard to turn the pages. Therefore, we're having some help this morning with the turning of the pages, and we're going to stop in the middle, turn the page, and start again. After church parents, they have instructions already. They're to come back up here once church is completely finished. They're going to pick up their bells and their gloves and their bell glove bags, take them back to the bell room. Those are the instructions. And ringers, I wanted everybody out there to know that. Okay, so when you go running. And we're ringing from stands this morning rather than tables. When you're not quite tall enough, your elbows get in the way, or should I say the foam on the table gets in the way. Therefore, we're at stands this morning. And in a way, it makes it harder to turn a page when you've got a, a stand in front of you. I'm sure you will appreciate what these kids have learned this summer. And believe me, they've all started from ground zero. Some have more music than others, but none of them have rung handbells before. The reason for some of them at the very top is because hands are too small to get around some of those handles. And they're doing it right. They know exactly where the campanile is, and they're doing it. You will be very pleased with what you hear, I'm sure. Thank you.
can you just come sit on the front row here? Good job, everyone. That was so wonderful. If we have any of our young friends joining at home, you're welcome to come forward as well. That was so wonderful. Oh, you just made everyone's day, right? Yeah, good. So our um, Bible story today is Jesus feeding a whole bunch of people. Now, there's a few stories like this in the Bible, Jesus feeding 4,000 people or 5,000 people. And in every story, he takes just a little bit of food and multiplies it miraculously to feed all these people. Have you heard that story before? Yeah. Well, the version we're reading today is my favorite because do you know where Jesus gets the food? Where? From a little boy. From a little boy. Yes, exactly. There's a little boy in that whole big group of people, a kid just like you, and he has his lunch in his like Power Rangers lunchbox, right? And he says, Jesus, I have this food. It's not a lot. It's just one, enough for one little boy, but you can have it. And that's what Jesus takes and multiplies it and feeds thousands and thousands of people. And that story I love because that little boy has a lot to teach us, especially us grown-ups, about sharing. So the book I'm going to read to you today is called Extra Yarn. It is your book. I took it off your bookshelf, yes. Um, this book is written by Mac Barnett and illustrated by John Clausen and published by, what's it called? Balzer and Bray. So extra yarn, do any of you, do you all know what yarn is? Yeah. And yarn comes in like a ball or it's called a skein, like a big, big thing of yarn, okay? So this is about a little girl and her yarn. And see if you can find similarities between this story and the one of Jesus feeding all the people. On a cold afternoon in a cold little town where everywhere you looked was either the white of snow or the black of soot from chimneys, Annabelle found a box filled with yarn of every color. How big is that box? It's not very big, is it? No, it's pretty little. So she went home and knit herself a sweater. And when Annabelle was done, she had some extra yarn. So she knit a sweater for Mars, too. That's Mars, her dog. But there was still extra yarn. A le oh, that would be smart to make a leash. Yeah, she did make a leash. Yeah, look at that. She already did. Yeah, I just missed that part. Yeah, but she still has extra yarn. When Annabelle and Mars went for a walk, Nate, Nate's over here, pointed and laughed and said, you two look ridiculous. You're just jealous, said Annabelle. No, I'm not, said Nate. But it turned out he was. So what'd she do? She made him and his dog a sweater. Yeah. She should have made a leash for him, that's true. And even after she'd made a sweater for Nate and his dog and for herself and for Mars, she still had extra yarn. Crazy, huh? At school, Annabelle's classmates could not stop talking about her sweater. Quiet, shouted Mr. Norman. Quiet, everyone. Annabelle, that sweater of yours is a terrible distraction. I cannot teach with everyone turning around to look at you. Then I'll knit one for everyone, Annabelle said, so they won't have to turn around. Impossible, said Mr. Norman. You can't. You think so? But it turned out she could, and she did, even for Mr. Norman. And when she was done, Annabelle still had extra yarn. So how many sweaters did she make there? Can you count them? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
nine. There's nine here. Plus she made one for Nate and the dogs. So she's made like a dozen sweaters already and a leash or two. It's a lot. So she knit sweaters for her mom and her dad and for Mr. Pendleton and Mrs. Pendleton and for Dr. Palmer and for little Lewis. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. It's like one giant piece of yarn. She made sweaters for everyone except Mr. Crabtree, who never wore sweaters or even long pants, and who would stand in his shorts with the snow up to his knees. No sweater for me, thanks, said Mr. Crabtree. So she made Mr. Crabtree a hat. And even then, Annabelle still had extra yarn. So she made sweaters for all the dogs and all the cats and for the other animals too. Soon, people thought, soon Annabelle will be out of yarn. So what kind of animals we got? A bear, a, bear, a bunny. Cat, dog. Yeah, yeah. Well, it might not be a pet bear. Just a bear that hangs out in the woods, you know. But it turns out she didn't run out of yarn. So Annabelle made sweaters for things that didn't even wear sweaters. The mailbox, the house, the birdhouse. The bird. I know the bird has a little sweater. You see it? You think so? Things began to change in that little town. Are you ready to see it? <laughs> what is she doing? What about those trees? I know, yeah, the trees aren't covered yet. From that one little tiny box. That's right, Jackson. That's a good question. News spread of this remarkable girl who never ran out of yarn. And people came to visit from around the world to see all the sweaters and to shake Annabelle's hand. One day, an archduke, it's up here, who was very fond of clothes, sailed across the sea and demanded to see Annabelle. Now, do you think he's going to be a good guy or a bad guy? Bad. You think so? You don't have a good feeling about him? Hmm, well, let's see. Little girl, said the Archduke, I would like to buy that miraculous box of yarn, and I am willing to offer you one million dollars. No, thank you, said Annabelle, who was knitting a sweater for a pickup truck. The Archduke's mustache twitched. Two million. Annabelle shook her head. No thanks. Ten million, shouted the Archduke. Take it or leave it. Leave it, said Annabelle. I won't sell the yarn. And she didn't. Do you think you would sell the yarn for ten million dollars? No. <laughs> yeah. I might. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. It's a lot of money. Because then you could buy it. Because then you could just, yeah, that's true. So that night, the Archduke hired three robbers to break into Annabelle's house. And they stole her box and took it to the Archduke, who set off across the snow and sailed over the sea. That's no good. Back to his castle. The Archduke put on his favorite song and sat in his best chair. Then he took out the box and he lifted the lid and he looked inside. You think there's no yarn? What, what's in the box? Nothing. There is something in the box. Air. Air. Air and a couple knitting needles, yeah. So how do you think he felt? Yeah. Yep. His mustache quivered. It shivered. It trembled. 
The Archduke hurled the box out of the window and shouted, Little girl, I curse you with my family's curse. You will never be happy again. You don't think so? Hmm. But can you see what that is? Yeah, like got, got on a little patch of ice. Yeah. How convenient. That is amazing. Bless you. And then what happened? She got it. She got it. It went all the way back to her. And she's getting it out of the water. So he said, you will never be happy again. Oops. But it turned out she was. <laughs> there you go. Now she's doing the trees. See that? She does. And here's one, one more page just for fun. I don't know. What do you think? Maybe because that other guy is stupid. Maybe, yeah, magic, yeah. Oh, maybe. Maybe it was there all along. He just couldn't see it. Maybe mm. he stole Yeah. Because he stole it because he's mean? Yeah. Maybe because he wasn't going to be nice to Rachel for a while. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Have you ever had something that you just had a little bit and then it, like, went a really long way? Like... You know how Jesus multiplied the food. She had all this yarn. Sometimes we can have maybe a little tiny bit of something, and it can go a long way. So one example of that is here we take a collection for RIP medical debt on our birthday Sundays. And if you give one dollar, do you know how much debt that pays off? One hundred dollars. Isn't that amazing? You give just a little bit, and it can go a really long way. When we work together and we give more, then it goes even farther. That's pretty great, huh? If she gave them $25, it would be like 3500 Yeah, a lot. I'm not the math person, but yes, a lot. There you go. All right, so yes. All right, now they're doing their math. Good. So I want you to remember two things, okay? One... Even if you give just a little bit or have just a little bit, God can help you multiply it and help a lot of people. And two, kids are super important and know that, okay? Even, especially in the church, but everywhere. You all are super important and we are so grateful for you. Okay? Can you pray with me? Thank you, God, for loving us and giving us this family of faith. Help us to share your love with everyone we meet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray. Bread of heaven, come down and fill us with your spirit, which satisfies like no other. We hunger and thirst for you today and long to be nurtured in your love and forgiveness. As we come to this sacred time and place where our hungers are finally and fully satisfied, we will wait and listen for all you have to say to us today. Amen. Our gospel reading comes to us today from the gospel according to John, chapter 6, verses 1 through 14, from the Common English Bible. This is John's telling of the feeding of the 5,000. Listen for God's word to us. After this, Jesus went across the Galilee Sea, that is, the Tiberias Sea. A large crowd followed him because they had seen the miraculous signs he had done among the sick. Jesus went up a mountain and sat there with his disciples. It was nearly time for Passover, the Jewish festival. Jesus looked up and saw the large crowd coming toward him. He asked Philip, where will we buy food to feed these people? Jesus said this to test him, for he already knew what he was going to do. Philip replied, more than a half year's salary worth of food wouldn't be enough for each person to have even a little bit. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said, a youth here has five barley loaves and two fish, but what good is that for a crowd like this? 
Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass there. They sat down, about 5,000 of them. Then Jesus took the bread. When he had given thanks, he distributed it to those who were sitting there. He did the same with the fish, each getting as much as they wanted. When they had plenty to eat, he said to his disciples, gather up the leftover pieces so that nothing will be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves that had been left over by those who had eaten. When the people saw that he had done a miraculous sign, they said, this is truly the prophet who is coming into the word into the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Gracious God, you give us so much, and what we give back is meager in comparison, but you take what we give and you multiply it. Help us to give generously of our time, our talents, our finances, and our love. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts gathered together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We walk into a restaurant with a toddler in tow. The host greets us and says, table for two and a half? two and a half. Children are the future. They may be small, but they are not halves. They are whole. They have thoughts and emotions, wants, needs, desires. It is not size or age or experience that makes a person whole. It is simply being. They're too young. They don't understand. And sometimes that's true, but kids get far more than we understand. They know what it is like to hurt and to celebrate, to win and to lose. Children are the future. Jesus said, let the little children come to me. He said that we must have faith like children in order to see paradise. Jesus said that whoever causes a stumbling block to trip up a child deserves punishment. Jesus loved children. Jesus welcomed children. Jesus honored children. Children are the future. But if children are the future, then what are they now? Entertainment? Cute faces that make us feel better about ourselves? If children are the future and only the future, what does that mean for all they have to offer us right now? What do we do with their creativity? their optimism, their energy, their joy. If children are the future, do we just set them aside until then? Do we continue to believe that children should be seen and not heard? Do we ignore their concerns? Do we silence their voices? That's not what Jesus would do. Jesus would embrace them just as they are. Jesus would not only welcome them to the table, but give them the seat of honor. Jesus would listen to their concerns, their hopes, their fears. Jesus would celebrate all that they have to give us and teach us, not just in the future, but now. A little girl with a magic box of yarn knits and knits and knits and knits, covering every person and animal and thing that she sees with her love. All the money in the world cannot pay for the gift she brings. A little boy shares his meticulously packed lunch, 
a nutritious meal of bread and fish, important for someone still growing. While the grown-ups fret over what to do, the boy simply trusts and shares, and miracles happen. All around our country, children stand before legislators and leaders, sharing their stories, asking for help. They may not yet have a vote, but they have a voice, and they are unafraid to use it. Children are not the future. Children are the present. They put our adult excuses to shame. Children are the present, and they bring us creativity and positivity and generosity and possibility. May we learn from them. May we simply listen without pre-formulating a response. May we be humble enough to trust the kids. May we be more like them. Because if children are the future, then the future is now. And the future is bright. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please remain seated as we sing our response together. The triune God has bestowed upon us many gifts, not that we may cling to them, but that we may give generously in gratitude. To financially support the mission and ministry of Hill Church, you are invited to place your offerings in the plates near the entrances, drop them off during the week, mail them to the church, or give electronically. Please rise and body your spirit as we join together in our unison prayer of dedication. Let us pray. Generous God, as individuals, what we give doesn't amount to much in face of the needs in our world. But as a congregation, what we offer becomes multiplied in usefulness. Bless our gifts, and with the addition of your blessing, may there be enough for all. Amen. And I invite forward at this time Sherry Neely and Lauren Nace. We had ordination and installation of officers a few weeks ago, and Sherry and Lauren could not be here, and so we are going to ordain and install them today. Sherry likes to sit as far away from me as she possibly can. The Apostle Paul tells us that there are a variety of gifts, but it is the same Spirit who gives them. There are different ways of serving God, but it is the same Lord who is served. God works through each person in a unique way, but it is God's purpose that is accomplished. To each is given a gift of the Spirit to be used for the common good. Together, we are the body of Christ and individually members of it. 
We are called into the church of Jesus Christ by baptism and marked as Christ's own by the Holy Spirit. This is our common calling, to be disciples of Jesus Christ and servants of our servant Lord. Within the community of the church, some are called to particular service as deacons, as ruling elders, and as ministers of word and sacrament. Ordination is Christ's gift to the church, assuring that his ministry continues among us. Through ordination, God provides for acts of care and compassion in the world and for the ordering and governance of the church and for the preaching of the word and the celebration of the sacraments. Session of Hill United Presbyterian Church, I present the following people for ordination and in installation to the following offices. Laura Nace to the office of elder and Sherry Neely to the office of deacon. Please rise and body our spirit as we join together in our responsive profession of faith. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? I do. Do you turn to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? I do. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? I will. God's help. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, with joy we give you thanks and praise. We praise you for leading your people Israel through the waters of the sea into freedom in the land of your promise. We praise you for sending Jesus, your son, who was baptized in the waters of the Jordan and was anointed as the Christ by your Holy Spirit. Through the baptism of his death and resurrection, you set us free from sin and death and give us cleansing and rebirth. We praise you for pouring out your Holy Spirit, who teaches us and leads us in all truth, filling us with a variety of gifts, that we might proclaim the gospel to all nations and serve you as a royal priesthood. We rejoice that you have claimed us in our baptism and anointed us for service in Christ's name, and that by your grace we are born anew. By your Holy Spirit, Renew us, that we may be empowered to do your will and continue forever in the risen life of Christ, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be all glory and honor now and forever. Amen. In baptism, you were claimed by the love of God, clothed in the grace of Jesus Christ and anointed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit to share Christ's mission in the world. You have been called by God, once again, through the voice of the church, for service and ministry in Jesus' name. Each time you are ordained or installed, and I hope there will be more after this one, you answer a set of questions, as do I. All of the questions are the same for pastors, elders, and deacons, except for one, which is call-specific. There is no hierarchy of ordination. As officers and leaders of the church, we all make the same promises and share in the same ministry. So in accordance with the Constitution of the Presbyterian Church USA, 
Please show your commitment to this calling once again by responding to the following questions. Do you trust, that's okay, you can use your cheat sheet, it's fine. That's why I printed it out. Do you trust in Jesus Christ, your Savior, acknowledge him Lord and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Do you? Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be, by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you? Do you? Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do and... Will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? Do you and will you? There we go. Will you fulfill your ministry in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of Scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? Will you? Will you be governed by our church's polity and will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry? working with them, subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit, will you? Will you, in your own life, seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world, will you? Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church, do you? Will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love, will you? And Lauren, will you be a faithful ruling elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in government and discipline, serving in councils of the church, and in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ, will you? And Sherry, Will you be a faithful deacon, teaching charity, urging concern, and directing help to the friendless and those in need? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? Questions are to the congregation. Do we, the members of the church, accept Lauren and Sherry as ruling elder and deacon by God through the voices of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ, do we? Do we agree to pray for them, to encourage them, to respect their decisions, and to follow as they guide us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church? Do we? We do. This is my favorite part. If you are able to kneel, since you are both being ordained today, if you can't, that's okay, you can just stand and um, face the cross. And everybody who has been ordained as a deacon, an elder, or a minister of word and sacrament in the PCUSA, you are invited forward as we lay hands on them as they are ordained. This is the part where almost everybody gets up, yeah. And all of Sherry's friends from the back row have to make their way down. <laughs> the weight of the hands that are upon you is not only the weight of ministry, but also the support of all of those who have come before you and who have been ordained and have served the church. Feel their power and feel their love as we pray together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for your faithfulness to us. In every age, you have called forth leaders to serve you and equip them with your gifts. Among your people, you've anointed prophets and rulers. You've called pastors, teachers, elders, and deacons to build up your church. With Moses, the 70 elders bore the burdens of your people, ministering in the power of your spirit. Alongside the apostles, deacons cared for all in need, and guarded the community's peace. In the church, deacons, elders, and pastors serve together, 
so that your people might be equipped for ministry and built up into the full unity of Christ. For your servants in every age and for the church of Jesus Christ, we give you thanks and praise. Pour out your Holy Spirit on Sherry, that she may be a faithful deacon, and on Lauren, that she may be a faithful elder. Give them openness to the Holy Spirit's leading, that they may see and serve wherever there is need. Equip them with courage to bear the gospel in the halls of power and to be your presence and might among those who are powerless. In everything, give them the mind of Christ, who did not grasp at greatness but emptied himself to become a servant of your reign. Give them joy in their walk of faith and a sure sense of your abiding presence for their work of ministry. Gracious God, pour out your power of spirit, your spirit of power and truth upon the whole church that we may serve you in this world. Sustain this congregation in ministry, ground us in the gospel, secure our hope in Christ, strengthen our service to the outcast, and increase our love for one another. Show us the transforming power of your grace that we may be servants of the gospel, offering a compelling witness in the world to the good news of Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray, amen. Sherry and Lauren, you are now officially ordained and installed into active service in the Church of Jesus Christ and for this congregation. Be faithful and true in your ministry so that your whole life will bear witness to the crucified and risen Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Need help? Welcome to this ministry. We turn now to a time of sharing our joys and our concerns. It is always a great joy to be able to witness the ordination and installation of officers. We give thanks for Sherry and for Lauren and for all of the new officers uh, for their willingness to serve the church. Coincidentally today, I'm also a part of an installation commission for a pastor later this afternoon, so I get the trifecta of installations today, which is lovely. So I'm um, prayers for the Glade Run Church in Valencia and Andy Smothers, who I've known for a long time, uh, who is going to be installed as their pastor there. We have a number of concerns to lift up today as well. We continue to pray for David Brady. Uh, I saw him this week, and he was chatty, which was very nice. Um, he has, um, he's still in the ICU. He is working on trying to wean from the ventilator at night. When he's awake, he does okay, but it's when he falls asleep um, that things go awry. So we continue to pray for him. He's really tired of looking at the ceiling in that hospital room. Seven weeks he's been there. So prayers for him. We also pray for Jamie Lynn, who is on grandma duty this week in Nashville, snuggling a baby. We continue to pray for the Zelinsky family, their son Isaac, is recovering from a traumatic brain injury following a car accident. Um, he is in North Carolina, and so we pray for his parents and his family and those caring for him. We also, uh, last week, we asked for prayers for our friend Nellie, a dear friend of ours. She had a brain aneurysm a week ago yesterday, and uh, I spent a lot of time with her on Wednesday as well. She is still critically ill and not out of the window of... Um, danger, but last night, late last night, she sent a text to her wife, which was just amazing. She can't, she's not speaking, but she can form sentences and she can text. So this was a big, um, a huge step forward for her. So we continue to pray for Nellie. She's uh, at Presby. Um, her wife, Laura, is in Erie and commuting back and forth, trying to take care of their kids. So it's a lot for them. We pray for those undergoing testing and waiting for results. We pray for those dealing with new diagnoses. We remember all we love who are living with cancer and undergoing treatment and all of our 
loved ones who are in assisted living and nursing facilities. Are there other joys or concerns to lift up today? Have a joy. We celebrated our 10 year wedding anniversary last week on the 2nd. Yay! Ellen and Greg celebrated their 10 year wedding anniversary this week, last week, so congratulations. Our family will be. There will be a new arrival in my cousin's family soon. She's going to be here any minute, probably. Oh. And on the flip side of that, my godson is in the same hospital. He's been having seizures. So we're waiting some testing with that. And they think it might actually be his heart. He's only 21. So you'd say some prayers for him. Absolutely. So Cindy's, um, there, there's a new baby coming any moment. Uh, and her cousin's family, so we celebrate new life and pray for a safe delivery if it hasn't already happened. And we also lift up Cindy's godson, who is in the same hospital, um, having dealing with seizures and undergoing testing for that. I'd like to have prayers for my next door neighbor. He's 10 years old, and they cannot find out what's wrong with him. He's gone through so many tests, and uh, I just want everybody to pray for uh, Gabe Morris. He's 10 years old. Thank you. Jane asked for prayers for her 10-year-old neighbor, Gabe, who um, has been having health issues for a while and has been undergoing a number of tests, and they can't figure out what is going on with him. So we pray for Gabe and his parents and everybody. Mm -hmm. Could I have prayers for the family and friends of Sandy Snyder? She's my neighbor. She passed away this week. We pray for Betty's, um, the friends and family of Betty's neighbor, Sandy Snyder, who passed away this week. Other joys or concerns to lift up this morning? Hearing none, then I invite you to get your communion elements ready. Friends, we come to this table by divine invitation. Just as he did millennia ago, Jesus still invites us to sit down and to have a meal, to receive a meal that satisfies the soul and contains the promise of eternal life. Here at Hill Church, we practice an open communion, which means that you don't need to be a member of this church or any church or have any particular beliefs to come to the table. If it was okay for Jesus to share a meal with those who questioned and those who doubted and even the one who betrayed him to death, then surely we are welcome too. So come, if you desire to be fed, come to the table just as you are. The divine invitation is for you. You are loved, you are home, and all are welcome here. Will you please join me in the great prayer of thanksgiving? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Jesus, bread of life and cup of salvation, despite our lack of spiritual creativity, faith, and obedience, you once again renew the invitation to eat at your table. When we are willing to accept it, you eliminate the hunger and thirst of our souls and satisfy us in ways that we cannot understand. For your faithfulness, we give you thanks. God, faithful creator, you graciously fed our ancestors in the wilderness, despite their complaining. With the same graciousness, you provide the bread of heaven to feed your church. You have invited us into relationship with you, not only in this life, but in life eternal. For your generosity, we give you thanks. 
Holy Spirit, comforter and corrector, you gather us together so that we may know God's word is true. You teach us how to see our sin and receive our Savior. For your intercession, we give you thanks. As we prepare to enter into communion with you once again, we pray that you would transform the simple elements we bring into that which satisfies. May we receive with our earthly bodies your heavenly meal, so that we may abide in you and in one another. As those gathered in your name, we join our voices in prayer, praying with the words Jesus, the bread of life, taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night when he was betrayed, Jesus sat and shared a meal with his disciples. And during that meal, he took the bread and he broke it. And he gave it to them and he said, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup and he poured into it. And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it often. And when you do, remember me. So every time we eat of the bread and we drink of the cup, we remember the life, the love, the death, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and we await his coming again. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The table is set. Let us commune together. Please rise and body our spirit and let us join together in our unison prayer after communion. Jesus, you feed the hungry with the bread of your life and the word of your kingdom. By the holy meal we have shared, renew us with your heavenly grace and in all our weakness, sustain us by your true and living bread that we may share your love to the world. Amen.
as you go from this time of worship, may God's love, which gives life to the world, sustain you. May the bread of life, Jesus Christ, feed you with food that endures. And may the power of the Holy Spirit nourish and strengthen you in faith. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God that will never let you go and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and every day. Amen.